Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you how to make some awesome keto, low carb, really like low sugar or sugar free really, uh, protein bars. I'm really excited to share this recipe with you today. I made some of those protein balls only last week and I got a great like response from you guys. I was like, oh, why not make some protein bars? I am still looking at making a whole range of the different protein foods, just so I'm not just only relying on protein powder to boost my protein. So yeah, I wanted to try out making these protein bars today. I hope you guys enjoy them. Do feel free to adjust what the ingredients are to suit what you want in your protein bars. These are just like a basic recipe. You can add in and will take away or change up some of the ingredients depending on what you want. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. I did change up one of the ingredients because I couldn't find it today. And that was hazelnuts, so I swapped it out for walnuts. Now hazelnuts are slightly less calories than walnuts but only slightly so i'll be using walnuts today they're also really high in omega-3 too so it's a great omega-3 boost for everyone i have also subbed out monk fruit juice or monk fruit sweetener for stevia it is a bit of a slight like it's a slightly different flavor i think monk fruit's a little bit sweeter this has a different kind of sweetness so i'm using as much of this as it would be using for monk fruit you can use just monk fruit in it rather than stevia but i just had stevia with me today so i'm going to use that i don't mind the sweetness of stevia it does have a bit of a different taste to sugar maybe you've tried it before the sweetness is a little bit different but i thought it'll do and i don't mind the taste so i'm going to use that we've also got cacao powder we've got cacao butter but you can use cocoa butter so it's a little bit different have a different flavor we've got almond flour and we've got almond butter as well you can use peanut butter if you choose or another nut butter even sunflower seed butter if you want it to be nut free although we are using different we are using almond flour in it as well plus walnuts so this is probably not the best for nut allergen recipes and then we've got protein powder again i'm using the protein powder i showed you guys last week in my protein ball video so this is the one i use the vital protein i am looking at getting new zest which is australian australian company made <laughs> protein powder it's really clean and it was recommended to me by Marla she's a naturopath and she has some really good clean recommendations for supplements and products also my naturopath checked it out and she said it was really good too so it's been double recommended so that is a good one to go for it's very clean it's also heavy metal tested as well which is really good um, I don't know about this one I know their collagen is heavy metal tested which is really important so that's really good but I'm not sure about their plant protein this is golden pea so I know usually if you get a rice protein powder, you want it to be heavy, heavy metal tested because rice often contains arsenic and lead and other heavy metals. So when you're getting protein powder like that, you do want it to be heavy metal tested. However, because this is pea, I'm not sure if you still want to be heavy metal tested or not. Because I don't know if peas tend to contain heavy metals or not. So that is one for me to look up later on. But yeah, so that's all the ingredients you're going to need today. It's a pretty simple recipe. You're just again going to check it all into your food processor, which I will show you guys when I do that. And just puts away. And again, it's no bake as well, so you don't have to wait for it to bake in the oven. Just set, set it in the fridge and then they're good to go. So with that walnuts, you want to actually have one cup that you're going to blitz and then a quarter cup of using hazelnut, same thing. A quarter cup extra to pop, pop, plop, to just pop on top. It's like a nice kind of nutty feature on top of the protein bars. But yeah, we'll get started. And then side note, for the protein powder, you can use protein collagen powder just because it's a little less gritty when used in baking and recipes so that can be also something that you change up I didn't have any protein or collagen powder with me so this is the one I'm going to be using today but that is a good note to keep in mind when making these bars if you want it to be kind of less greedy go for protein collagen powder to, like that's combined also I didn't have any of my sugar free cacao nuts with me today so I don't have anything to drizzle over the top of these bars but it's a good optional thing to do and really worth it is to just get some of the sugar free chocolate like dark chocolate as well and just melt it and then drizzle it over the top of the bars before you put it in the fridge to set and oh it's just heavenly it's so good so that's also something to keep in mind i'll see if i can find them throughout the video and try and do it myself so first up you want to line a baking dish or baking tray a baking tray like a what do you call it a pan a pan something so simple with some baking paper now i usually use those reusable silicon liners which have been so good but unfortunately they broke so i don't have them with me i'm actually going to be ordering some more soon so at the moment i'm just going to be using baking paper which is more wasteful and uh it's not something i really want to do 
But if you can, do opt for those reusable silicone ones because you can just reuse them over and over again. And it's so handy. Also saves you on buying so much baking paper. But for today, I'm using some parchment paper. So you just want to make sure you, when you line it, you still want it to kind of be folding over the edge of it at the top. Just so you can lift them out at the end. Okay, that took two seconds and that's ready to go. Pour in, pour, pour in the mixture. Next, you're going to grab your walnuts or hazelnuts or whatever type of nuts you're going to use. And you're going to pop them into your food processor and blitz them up until they become like a fine powder. And then we'll go from there. So that is pretty much how I'm going to leave it. You want it to be kind of like a fine meal, sort of like, so like almond meal or you get those other nut meals. You want it to be like that. So maybe a little bit more pulsing. So I might pulse it for a little bit longer because it's still a little bit clumpy in bits. <laughs> but yeah, you kind of want it to be like a fine powder, a fine meal. That's what you're going for. Also, don't over blend it because it can turn into a kind of butter, like a nut butter. And you don't want that to happen. So just be careful about that. You, know, you want to pulse rather than blend consistently to stop that from happening. Okay, so I've blended it a little bit more. I turned it up so it was higher speed as I was blending. And it's much, much better now. So I'm quite happy with that consistency. So now we're going to add in the other ingredients. So now we're going to add in the protein powder. So I'm just going to add in about 50 grams again. So two scoops. Or you can just do a quarter of a cup. Then you're going to add in two tablespoons of cacao powder or cacao powder. I'm using cacao powder today. Then you're going to add in one cup of almond flour. Pop that in. If you can't find almond flour anywhere, you can use almond meal. It's just, I think it's like more dense, I would say. It's kind of more gritty on the gritty side, whereas the flour is kind of lighter, fluffier. So just a little bit better. But if you can't find it, you can sub in almond meal as well. Then I'm going to add in a teaspoon, because it's quite strong, of stevia. So you want to make sure when you're getting it, you just want the stevia glycosides. Just that. And this one's 100% pure certified organic stevia glycosides. Without any other additives. So no preservatives, not anything else. Because then you know it's just the stevia. So you'll be careful of that. Because sometimes they can sneakily add in other things. Which is not what you want. So when you're getting stevia, that's what you kind of want to aim for. So just want a small teaspoon. And then you just want to add a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt, which I'm just going to guesstimate. Put that in. That old do bunker. And then you're just going to pulse it a few times just until it's just combined. And you may need to scrape down the sides a few times and pulse again to make sure it's all mixed through. Again, we're choosing to pulse just so it doesn't turn into a nut butter, which has happened to me before. <laughs> so don't want to overdo it. So just until it's just combined. Perfect. So try and it. Yeah, exactly what you want to do. So that's kind of what you want it to look like. Again, you don't want to overdo it because I'm already starting to see that it's starting to stick together like nut butter. So I'm very careful not to over blitz that and turn it into nut butter as we're doing. Moving on. So I forgot to mention before that you want to melt the cacao butter or cacao butter. So before you put it into the blender. So I just melted mine by doing 30 second increments. So I put in 30 seconds, then stir it through, then 30 seconds again until it completely melted, just like this. Now I'm going to pour it into our food processor. And then you're going to add in two tablespoons of almond butter. Again, you want to make sure that when you get almond butter, I did talk about this in my last video too, that they're not all created equal. Some are a bit more runnier than others. So when you open an almond butter and you see the oil at the top, you just want to make sure you mix that through to make sure that the rest of it's nice and thick and it's not all thin at the top. Because if you use it like too thin a butter in your boat bars, they won't hold as well together. So you want to keep that in mind. You want to make sure that the almond butter is nice and thick. So just make sure you mix that oil through. So now we're going to process this until a dough forms. So it should actually pull away from the center, be nice and thick. And when you push it, it should leave a fingerprint in the dough. It also should be firm and shiny, not runny or crumbly. And if it's not becoming that consistency, you may need to manually, manually stir it until it becomes that sort of thick dough. I'll show you what I mean when I get to that point, what it looks like and what the desired consistency is. So this is exactly what you want it to look like. So as you can see, it's pulled up against the sides. It's not runny, not crumbly. And when you push your finger in, it leaves a nice little fingerprint like that. That is excellent. <laughs> Perfect, so we're gonna move on to the next step. So once yours looks like this, then you're ready to move on. So 
So now we're ready to put the dough. I keep doing that. Sorry. So now we're going to press this dough kind of mixture into our lined baking pan. So when I say press, you need to really press down so that when it sets, it sets nice and compact. If it's like kind of got air bubbles throughout, it won't set properly. When you cut it, it'll kind of break. So you will make sure to press it down nice and firmly. Now once that's pressed in nice and securely, you're going to add your chopped up nuts just to the top, so that quarter of a cup of chopped nuts. You're just going to whoop, pop on top and then you're just going to press it in. So spread them out and then just press them into the top of the slice or the bars. Then you're just going to drizzle with your melted chocolate. I found some melted chocolate. Well, not melted, I melted it. <laughs> but I found some dairy-free chocolate. It's not exactly sugar-free, so it's not super ideal. But I thought it would do for now. I'm only using a small little bit just to drizzle over the top. But if you can, definitely go for dairy-free chocolate. Like those cocoa melts that I talked about in my banana bread video. They're a really good one to use. And then just drizzle that over try and make you a little more artistic than i'm being perfecto and then we're just going to set it in the fridge for about one to two hours or until it's completely set Now they're finished setting, they look so good, it took about two hours for me. So they're finished setting now, I'm going to now remove them from the pan, just by pulling out the parchment paper, and then I'm just going to chop them up into like little bars. So when you're cutting them, just to note, you can either go down, straight down, and do a slow sliding motion, or you can do a slight rocking motion. Just be careful not to seesaw when you're cutting it, because it can crumble. So you want to keep that in mind. It should make about 12 bars. Some are gonna, mine are going to be slightly bigger than the others. Not very evenly done. And then just go along sideways. And done. Now you can plate them up and they're good to go. So when storing them in the fridge, you want to lay them with bits of baking paper in between. Just make sure that they don't stick. Otherwise, just do them side by side in a container which is what I'm going to do. And the final moment, the taste test. Oh, that's good. It's like moussey. Mmm. Whoa. Man, yeah, I just want to eat this whole, that whole thing right now. I love it. Mmm. It's so good. Woo! So that concludes today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know if you try it out too and what you think and if you sub in other ingredients or if you change up anything please let me know and I'll try it myself too. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys again soon in my future videos. Bye!